This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, Marvin fam? Arch here, Fragbox TV. I'm gonna press a button. What am I gonna do? Check this out. Thank you, Adoptive Reef, for making this very handy, very cool little, uh, what do we call this? Button box? You hold that button down and it'll kill the flow to the entire shop here for 15 minutes. Isn't that neat? Everything goes off. Why would we do that? Because I want to talk to you about, ta-da, what our store specializes in. If you're new to the channel, hello, welcome. We're in Toronto. We're in Toronto, Toronto, Ontario. If anyone's watching out there and you didn't know, it always surprises me how many people come in and they go, oh my God, I've been watching on YouTube for a year. I didn't know you guys were in Toronto, you're in Canada. Kavina, who works here, watching for months, she didn't know that we were in Toronto until she saw me go outside. And what did you see, Kavina? TTC bus? Yeah. The Toronto Transit Commission. She saw a bus. I was thinking about this the other day. Why do they call it TTC? I don't like that name. And they use red. It's like, it's so angry. It's like, it's always late and they should just do some rebranding. Anyways, let's get into it before we get too sidetracked. What are we talking about today? Like I said, corals. And I am actively trying to speak slower because of that one comment from you made me laugh so hard. This guy said, or person or woman, whatever, said, <laughs> I think I have to check that my speed setting on YouTube isn't 2.0 because March talks so fast. But I'll try and talk at a normal humanly rate. Um, I want to kind of give you a walkthrough of the corals we have in stock and comment on them and the ones that really catch my eye and maybe give you some info so you can kind of see what's, uh, what's going on and what they're all about and maybe learn something along the way. NFS, that is a very important acronym you will see probably in any store like this that you come across. What does it mean? What does it mean, Leandro? Pop quiz. Not, oh, I'm kind of surprised you got it, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something silly, like not fairy sugar. Anyways, not for sale, not for sale. Why are they not for sale? Because I really like the color on these anemones. I don't, I'm not crazy about anemones in general. I never personally add anemones to my own display tanks, even though I'm breaking my rule right here. But this is kind of like a hybrid. This is our fragoon. It's a lagoon. We frag from it. It's mostly hard corals. But this one, for some reason, really, really caught my eye. Super bubbly. I like the green undertones that you're getting. These are called the Toronto Explosive Spicy Butthole Anemones. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> you like that name? <laughs> I don't keep up with anemone names. You want to call them Chicago fire lovers, whatever you call them, that's great. I don't keep up with anemone names. They're just nice. But now that I've come up with Toronto spicy butthole, then it'll just be the, it's going to be the name of these ones here. <laughs> Somebody came in the shop the other day they're looking for a zoanthid. It was a $10 frag. And they said, March, I want the name of this Zoa. So I said, I come over, I walk over to the to where we have some of the ten, fifteen dollars. I say, okay, you want me to make up a name? And they go, No, I don't want you to make up a name. I want the real name. And <laughs> I think they fail to realize they're all made up names. The, all the zoanthids, all the corals outside. Of, even if you want to think about it, you want to get technical. Even the Latin names are made up names. I understand why they're important for classification and why we use them. But they're made up. This is not really a Rasta. This is not Rastafari, Iri, Jawa. No, this is a zoanthid that happens to be orange and green. I personally, I do like the zoanthid names. I don't think she thought it was too funny though that I was trying to make up a name on the spot. These are pinwheels. These are actually called butt munchers. These are what we call ninja turtles, nirvanas, red bulls, draculas. Hey, what's going on, man? All right, let's see what we have. I've actually turned on the white lights on our Radeon Gen 4. Radeon Gen 4 Pros. These things are now uh, eight years old. Eight years old, they've given me absolutely zero problems, zero issues. They're always connected. They're running off the Apex controller. And um, yeah, shout out to Ecotech. Just done an awesome job with these lights. I really, really like the color rendition on the four, I don't see any point in changing. I have one five running there, Gen 5. If you don't know what I'm talking about, generations of lights. These are the Gen 6s, but the fours, man, the fours are where it's at. Okay, so why did I turn it to white? Because I think sometimes it gives, hey, what's going on, man? A more accurate representation of sort of the color than doing like a filter, like an orange filter with very strong 
blue light. So sometimes I'll just turn it to white. And actually, when I take photos for the website, I do it under this same setting. So if you ever wonder how the photos come out on the site, I'm shooting under white light. And um, I just find that it's a little bit more accurate and more honest. That's the word I'm going to use. It's going to give a more honest representation instead of an exaggerated blue sort of appearance. Okay, okay so, so coming in look, it's really hard for me to... Dax is telling us his tank is actually closer to this look that we have here. Very white. This is what all tanks used to look back like back in the day. We didn't have control. You had halides. Did you have halides at some point? I did. Yeah. Halides? Yeah, halides. so you didn't get to choose. You kind of, well, I guess there was a little bit of color spectrum. You had 20K, you had 12K, you had 20, uh, 14K, but that's why I say this is a more honest representation. Nobody really runs it this way except for our friend Dax here. Usually it's quite quite more blue. I think that we're probably on the lower end of the blue spectrum um, just compared to when I walk into other stores. He also just traded and I'm going to show you these are all grown by... Do you have any secrets or tips for people that want to grow frog spawn or hammer like this? Uh, well, my tank they like the 10k light and um, keep your calcium alkalinity up. And they're happy. They look really good. Look how many heads. Actually, this is only a fraction of it because Leandro has two more about this size in the basement that he's just cutting up. Makes me so happy when we get stuff back um, from customers grown in captivity. It's not taken from the wild. You know, it's it's really cool. It's sustainable. And also, I think other hobbyists have a much better shot with something that has just been acclimatized to. Um, tank conditions instead of coming you know straight from the wild and then you putting it in your tank it's very very different from ocean parameters to our aquarium parameters but this has been how long you've been growing this probably 15 years 15 years so it's it's proven to do well in um, those type of conditions so okay maybe I can finally get to the point of today's video is to kind of walk through and talk to you about these blastomusas number one candy apple blastomusas if you're ever looking for lps like this just make sure that if you're going to buy one that you want to see this fleshy what i mean by fleshy um fat what do i mean by that it's just like lots of tissue you don't want to see any skeleton so i know we have one here that doesn't look spectacular and i'm just going to show you as a quick example what to avoid Ooh, let you know. let's see where is that blasto hmm Okay, maybe someone bought it. Uh-oh. I'm not seeing it. But kind of like this. Same idea with Aiken. See how there's like that little bit of skeleton? Why do we have them here? Because we'll still sell them for 5 or 10 bucks. We'll tell people before we buy them, you know. Um, never want to see skeleton or tissue. But some people like to try and nurse them back to health. And I don't have the heart to just take them and throw them out. There is still a little bit of life. They are still hanging on. But we always do sell them with a disclaimer. So you typically don't buy them like that one on the left side of your screen if you see skeleton if you don't know what you're doing just just avoid those and, and just go with ones that look healthy same goes for these ones here our hammers and frog spawn this is actually a very underappreciated piece it's actually closer to like the blue side but you won't be able to see that until the white lights come on because blue corals under blue lights they, cr they cancel each other out it just becomes washed out and you can't really appreci appreciate i find blue and purple corals with um, strong blue lights you're just not going to see anything so it's not until we turn up the whites like on this one and then same goes sorry for the motion sickness over here number 30 this purple frog spawn same idea under purple not gonna see it um, we have some really nice rodacus right now check these out so many cool colors this is another one that's grown in captivity and underneath Sometimes our coal like tank, yellow eye coal tank is doing a great job of cleaning the underside of the rack. What a great, great fish. I love this thing. We can't get them anymore because they came from Hawaii. But we still managed to have one that we've had for many years. Check out this beautiful Indonesian gold torch coral. And these have gone through an antibacterial dip. So all of our torches look just spectacular right now. And I'm slowly learning the names. There's too many and they're too often changing. So we call these golds. I think these are New York Knicks. I think these are Dragon Soul. Something along those lines. But I always tell people, don't get caught up with the names. Just buy the ones that you find are appealing. The ones that look good to you. And always go with your gut. Don't overthink it. And buy for color. Don't buy for size. Because if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, they're all going to grow over time. So buy the ones that look good because they're going to get bigger. Leandro is taking home his first coral frag. This kid is frag probably 
50,000 corals. Never oh, yeah. kept one at home. Let's see. What are you taking home? Taking a little eight can. Uh, eight can. That is just, yeah, it's a good start. Eight can so. coral and the fish from hell. I don't know why he wants the fish from hell, but he's taking it. What else? What else can I tell you about the corals in this tank? Sometimes you need the blue light to appreciate stuff. So I'm bigging up the white light like this, our hologram hammer. This looks like crap under white light. You really need blue to appreciate one like this. Um, different corals, different lights, different appreciations. Button scolies. This is something we really don't get often. They're like really tiny, mini, mini scolies. These would be great for smaller tanks. And I see some nice open brain corals, some yumas. I know at the end of this video, we're gonna get a bunch of emails with how much is it to ship to Austin, Texas? Or how much is it to ship to Seattle or Miami? We are in Canada and unfortunately we don't send any of these live corals anywhere but Canada. And if I show you the viewership on the channel, only 10% of the people watching are actually here in this country. So only 10% of the people watching out of all the thousands of views can actually purchase the stuff I'm showing you. So a lot of the videos I'm making, I'm not trying to sell you the stuff because I actually can't physically send it to you. So I'm really just trying to um, share my passion with, uh, and love for the corals and also help educate and share some of my experiences on how not to kill hammer corals. Actually, very, very good video we did was the secret to keeping hammer coral. If you ever struggle with euphilia, I think that one is really worth watching. There's some episodes that are not always worth watching. They're just kind of there, they exist, but some of them are really good and help to solve problems. And that is one of them, How the secret to keeping hammer coral. So in that video, we bring a hammer coral back from the dead and how we did it i'll give you a quick synopsis was with raising our magnesium actually kavina just had this problem at home her magnesium bottom out and i find a lot of people don't realize how important magnesium is this is my preferred test kit go out and get an aquaforest test and uh, this is also really good for raising it uh, or use esv that's another brand that's good but i think a lot of people don't realize how important mag is until it's completely depleted their hammers frog spawn and torch they look like shit they start to die, they don't have polyp bailout or they recede, and then they start looking at water chemistry and then they realize, I see this happen so, so, so many times. But it normally takes uh, magnesium being depleted and for the coral to suffer, for people to take action, we're very reactive instead of proactive. So if I can share any advice from this video is pay attention to the magnesium if you're gonna be keeping lots of LPS corals. Another question we get all the time is how the heck, March, do you get your acans so puffy? Like this, like almost what I, the term I always use is like the flesh is just falling out of the skeleton, like they're so happy. And there's two ways. One, I keep magnesium elevated in all the systems around 1500 parts per million, which you may think is crazy, but I'm telling you it's not. Bump up the magnesium and your LPS will love you. And two is coral feeding, March's secret super coral sauce, which we have now released. It's called Coral Curry. You can get it on reefcasa.com. If you're in Canada, fragbox.ca. It's only 10 bucks, give it a shot. Uh, check this out. This is some Tyree pink lemonade. I was trying to grow for freaking years. Tank crashed and we took our piece out, but a little bit survived on the rock. And from that piece, it encrusted into this like four inch by four inch mat. And now finally, I have growth <laughs> like resurrection. This phoenix from the ashes of the dead one has survived and we're actually getting some growth. This is a piece that has always, always eluded me. So it's really cool to see that from nothing, I'm getting finally, it's almost like when I stopped trying to grow it, that's when it happens. My grandmother would always have this saying, Marcello, when you're not looking, that's the one you're gonna find. I'm not really sure what it means, but I should uh, look into that. Actually, that's how I found my girlfriend. When I wasn't looking, that's when you're gonna find. Okay, thank you, Nona, you're always right. Some nice flower pot. This always gets attention in the store. People always ask, oh my God, what is that? This is actually alveopora? Alveopora, not gonipora. I find actually a little bit easier to keep, in my experience, alveopora, a little bit easier to keep than gonipora. I've never really had trouble with this. This is a coral that we used to say back in the day is like, you just, it, it, it's not possible long-term. That is definitely not the case. People grow it out, frag it and trade us back pieces now. It's cultured. Those days are behind this. For me, I, I find that feeding is very important and low flow, medium light. Those are my, I, I'm always asking reefers when I see them have healthy examples of any type of flower pot, what's your secret? 
Um, when we were in Japan last year at Tokyo Aquatic, our friend Vlad had a really nice collection and he had them under intense flow. And it goes against what I do. So, you know what? You almost just have to try for yourself and see what works. So here in our Studio 12, our Reef Casa Studio 12 Aquarium. Why is it called Studio 12? 12, because it's 12 gallon studio, because that's the name I came up with. I thought it was cool, studio. Um, it's kind of like, I'll get into it another time. But anyways, low flow, look at this. Almost no flow, super, super low. That's where they look good, that's where they open. So. You can listen to my silly voice and you can watch other videos and you can read all day and you can go on Facebook and, and gather as much information but sometimes you're going to find that your experience with the coral is just uh, opposite to everything you've been taught or learned or, or read and um, yeah, it's just uh, that, that's what seems to work for me. I have some under higher flow in this tank and they just don't look as puffy they just don't look as big or as healthy as i'd like to see them so this one here is getting a lot of flow but then i go to indonesia and i'm seeing these things in the wild where they grow them and they have crazy flow so you know what i don't know just try them out but acans i can tell you you want acans to look like this check out our acans you want puffy low light feed them the coral curry and bump up your magnesium and i don't see how they are not gonna look like ours just this is what i want to see obese Fat, big acan heads. Let me show you what else we have and then we'll uh, kind of start to wrap up this video. Some cyanarias, cyanarina, cyanaria, cyanaria. Am I saying it right? I don't know why I can't remember this. I, my memory is pretty good, but on some things it begins to waver. Cyanaria or glass cushion coral. Sometimes I see that on my list when I'm ordering them from overseas. That's a really funky one. We have a lot right now. So there were some on the sale, on the sale, on the sale on the site. Too much talking today. On sale on the site. And people always ask, oh, what's wrong with it? They assume that if it's on sale, there's something wrong with it. Sometimes it's just that we have a lot. We're overstocked and they're not selling. And sometimes we put stuff on sale. I try to avoid sales at all costs. Oh, suspicularia. Look at this. This is something where you need the white light again to appreciate. Let me show you a piece over here, actually, over on the corner. So this is a piece of coral that I really, really love. It's a soft coral. It's easy to keep. The thing grows like a weed for me. It's kind of like Xenia's long tentacle cousin. And I would consider it non-invasive though. It's easy to peel off the rock. And what always happens with this coral, in my experience, is that it grows, it grows, it grows. Like this used to go all the way up the side of this tank, all the way up here, all the way up the rock, and then it gets to a certain size, and then it deflates and shrinks down to nothing. I think that what it's doing is basically like out competing itself. It's starving itself of a certain essential nutrient that it needs inside the water. And it gets to that breaking point where it gets so big and that nutrient or whatever it is, mineral, whatever I'm not testing for, it becomes completely depleted and then it uh, unknowingly kills itself because there's none of that in the water and we're not really water changing this tank. <clears throat> crazy I know but uh, yeah that's what happens it's just sort of a revolving experience it's almost like a cyclical coral where I see it grow out and then withers back down to nothing grow out and then nothing but the person that we get it from does not have that that experience so I feel like this is just mine and I haven't heard of anyone else having that but maybe you have anyways I think we're gonna wrap up today's video I hope you learned something I hope you had fun I hope you like yellow hammer corals and we'll see you next time bye for now